Welcome to the Gaia update for the Venus retrograde happening October 5th to November 16th, 2018. I'm Adrian Elise. So even though this retrograde, it goes from October 5th to November 16th, there is a shadow period. We've kind of talked about that. That's when the planet is already in the area that it will go back to during the retrograde. And that's in for a Venus retrograde. That happens for about a month before and a month after. So in this case, Venus went into its retrograde uh, shadow on September 3rd. So we have been, you know, we were just kind of coming out of this whole retrograde season with our main action planets all in retrograde over this last few months. And we're still kind of still resolving from that. And in fact, Mars comes out of its retrograde shadow on October 9th after Venus has already stepped into its retrograde. So we're having kind of like a little bit of a push-pull energy here, but we're going to talk through this Venus retrograde because Venus isn't an action planet. It's a planet of our deep inner uh, desires, loves, and what values, what really matters to us, our self-worth. And so we're going to be, it's a very different type of a retrograde. But coming on the heels of all this action planet retrograde, it's telling us something very important. The universe is giving us a very important message here. That it's time to reevaluate on a deep core level what we really want and what we really care about. And what what is, where is our passion lie in this life? What do we really value? And what do we want to uh, what do we need to get rid of in order to step into a life that's more truly meaningful for us? So this is because Venus is in Scorpio when it takes this retrograde. It takes the retrograde at 10 degrees Scorpio. So those first 10 degrees of fixed signs in your chart are going to be really affected uh, by this Venus retrograde as well as the last five degrees of the cardinal signs because Venus will retrograde back into Libra, which is really interesting because Venus in Scorpio has an intense intensity, which Venus isn't necessarily, that's not her game. You know, she kind of likes the surface. She likes the beauty. She likes uh, peace and harmony and love and equilibrium. And uh, that's that because she's a ruler of Venus. I mean, a ruler of <laughs> um of Libra. And so it's very interesting because she's going into this intensity of Scorpio. She gets into 10 degrees into it. And then she says, Hey, I don't know about this. <laughs> and so she retrogrades back out. And that means that she's going to be spending a whole bunch of time in both of these signs in Scorpio and in Libra, because when uh, she will go back into Libra, um, on November 1st. And so the whole month, month of November, she's going to be back in Libra. And then she turns direct on the 16th, but of course it's going to take her a while to get back out of that retrograde shadow, a whole month until December 17th, 18th, mid-December. That's when she comes out of her retrograde shadow. That's pretty much, we're heading into that solstice time of year, that rebirth time of year, the end of 2018. And that's kind of like this energy of this Venus retrograde has a lot of this. I mean, Scorpio is death, rebirth, and transformation. And so so with Venus going into this territory, it's kind of like, this is where we have to face the music, you know, of what's going to really make us happy in this life and the changes that need to be made and the shadow that may need to be resolved and released, you know. Now, I think it's incredibly potent that this Venus retrograde comes on the heels of uh, Jupiter, a very long, a whole month of Jupiter and Scorpio, and Jupiter took a retrograde, and so it has now come out of retrograde, but has not, it will not come out of its retrograde shadow. It took a retrograde at 23 degrees of Scorpio, and so does not come out of that shadow until October 6th, the day after, or pretty much right in that same day that Venus takes a retrograde. So these this, these events are really important, and I've been talking a lot about how throughout the year, Jupiter and Scorpio, Jupiter shines light, it expands, 
whatever it touches, okay? So in this case, it's expanding the shadow work. It's expanding these deep, dark places of our psyche where lie our passions and our deep desires, but also everything that's in the way of those and all of their misconceptions and inherited junk and belief systems and programming. And it's kind of like everything you don't want to deal with. You know, you know, it's like, in the closet. And Jupiter's like, hey, you know, let's shine the light on this stuff. But, you know, it takes a while for these transits to really affect us. It's like it's working in the in the invisible. And so we've had this this whole year. But Jupiter took a long retrograde, kind of taking its time. Now it's going full bore through these um, these end part of Scorpio, getting ready to move into its home sign. It cannot wait to get into its home sign in Sagittarius next month. And so it's got one more month in Scorpio and how, you know, just synchronistic that Venus is now taking a retrograde in Scorpio. So Venus is, you know, our personal planets, that these move faster. The bigger planets move slower. They're our transpersonal planets. So it's kind of like Venus is checking in on this uh, Jupiter and Scorpio, cleaning it up, sorting it out on a deep inner psychic level because Venus is what we love and what we care about. So we're being forced to really reevaluate our life on deep levels. Now, for a lot of people, this has to do with self-worth because Venus is also the ruler of Taurus. This is our resources. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, Taurus ruling our money, and that is a resource, but really that's that's a, a, a symptomatic resource. Our true resources are our inner resources, you know, because money, you can stack that stuff up. It doesn't actually have any value. And um, what really has value is our inner gifts. And so when we're talking about a Venus retrograde, we're talking about reevaluating whether or not we're using our inner gifts in Scorpio. Are we living our truth? Scorpio wants to get, Scorpio doesn't care about um, the niceties, like like Venus and Libra. It's about kind of the niceties and it's about having things look nice and, you know, harmonious and beautiful on the surface, right? And Scorpio's like, get down into the dirty dirt and let's make it real. And I think this is something that's going on in our psyche right now. It's like this um, kind of almost like a pendulum effect from all of this technology and isolationism that's happened. It's like, it seems like you have a social life, but really it's just such a, like we said, it's, the, it's just the niceties, right? And um, so score, there's this kind of thing happening where people are starting to deeply crave connection and purpose and meaning. And this is a really important time for our planet as humanity is kind of like wakes up to what's really going on. That's that Jupiter and Scorpio want to know the truth, clean out the closet, come on. And then Venus is like mop up. Because it's our, it's bringing it home into our personal life. Like, what is all of this crazy insanity shadow? Like people showing the worst side of themselves in public life. What is that? What's that about for us personally? You know, like, and I think a lot of people are kind of claiming, um, kind of needing to go deeper to truth and meaning and connection. And that's what Scorpio really wants. And so Venus is kind of like. It has to go into the underworld. It has to go into the depths. It has to go into the closet. It has to go under the water. It has to go into these deeper inner places within ourselves where we have to face the truth. And this is like a disclosure, right? And disclosure in our personal life because Venus is a personal planet. And it's kind of saying like, are you really happy? Like, you know, we can go through our life with our technology and our and our substances and our busyness and our everything we use to distract ourselves from reality, but it's like we are here stuck in reality, and so many people feel unsatisfied on a deep level in this life. You know, unsatisfied with their work, with their how whether or not they have permission to access their skills. Nobody really wants what they have to offer, but they have all these great things inside, and. Um, of course, this has been all getting triggered with that North Node in Leo. And so the North Node is going to be moving next month into um, into, can into Cancer. And so we're kind of completing the North Node in Leo, too. And that's like, can you shine your light? You know, so these go hand in hand because Venus is like, am I really happy? Like, 
oh, I've been kind of dancing around this deep inner psyche part of myself. And of course, Venus is going to go dip her toes in the water and, you know, in Scorpio, turn retrograde, you know, kind of talk up, you know, men, kind of uh, reflect this whole year of Jupiter and Scorpio and then kind of go back into Libra. <laughs> And kind of like, la, 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 la. And Libra's kind of like, it's okay. We can all get along. It's all fine. Just keep it all copacetic and it's cool, right? And uh, can be overly accommodating. Now, Libra, or, and then Scorpio is kind of like, um, no, like, I need to get to the truth. I need to have people around me that are not uh, lying to themselves. So this is a lot about where we're lying to ourselves and where we're not being true with what we really want and desire in this life and then of course and then we talked about how these new timelines are trying to land and so for a lot of people this Venus is about that self-worth do you deserve the blessings or you know and this is where humanity's at in general like are you going to stand up and break out of these chains of this artificial reality that's been created for us and and really live or are you going to just kind of go the easy way you know and and Venus and Scorpio says "Mm mm-mm there's no easy way around this, right? There's an elephant in the room, and it is keeping us from being able to move <laughs> anywhere in our life, you know, and it's hiding under the rug, but, you know, it's really hard to hide it, an elephant, <laughs> you know? So it's like we got to kind of work around it, and, and in fact, there's no really work around it. There's only this deep inner work, and, of course, we're really been prepared for that with this Saturn square Chiron leading up to this Venus retrograde. So just some really potent energy here, forcing us to go deep within our psyche and figure out if, if um, we deserve the life we really want, if we deserve to express our light and our truth, and uh, what we need to do to get there. You know, what do we need to clear from the shadows? What do we need to face inside of ourselves and the truths in the world to become more free, to live the life we really want to live? So if you're on that journey and you've been paying attention and on the page 2018, you know, we're talking about 2019 every time, you know, there's definitely these energies that there's a very, it's a big shift and that's going to start next month when that North node and Jupiter, Jupiter moves into its home sign of Sagittarius and the North node is going to move into Cancer. Very different energies. We're already starting this, but Venus retrograde is going to keep us in this 2018 energies for quite a while <laughs> until we sort some inner stuff out. So now Venus retrograde is famous for bringing old lovers into your life. And Scorpio is about kind of dealing with stuff from the past that's on resolve too, that shadow energy. So that's very much a possibility. But I think what's really going to be coming up for people is old patterns in new relationships, you know? And it's like all of a sudden where you're kind of like, oh gosh, like how did I get here? You know, it's like the same pattern and I thought I dealt with it, and it's back. And, and, you know, of course, with Venus, rules relationships and um, wants love, wants harmony. Um, Scorpio wants passion and realness and truth. And so it's like we're kind of having to come to the truth with ourselves around relationships. And so inevitably, these old relationships, whether in the form of the actual person, or, but more likely the energy is around um, those old patterns coming up and kind of being like, you know, it's almost scary, you know, scary in the dark, right? You know, and you have this old stuff come up and you're like, ah, and then it makes you doubt everything because it's like, oh, I thought this was addressed. And now can I trust this person? Scorpio has a hard time trusting because it can't, it doesn't, it's not comfortable with people who don't, who lie to themselves. And he can't, you know, Scorpio cannot tolerate emotional suppression. So that's kind of interesting, too, because like we said, Venus is happy to kind of go along and put up with things for a while, but not in Scorpio. And so there, expect some deep, but also true ringing. You know, when you get, when you're living a life where you're just kind of blah and you don't know why, it's kind of depressing. It's kind of like a low-grade esoteric depression that most of these, especially soul groups, are interested in this work. Um, are going through right now on the planet and then you know but what's the deeper cause of that and that's what this Venus and Scorpio wants us to look at is and and that's not funny it's fun it's like it's that scary feeling of like ah 
the monster from the past has come to haunt me again, and I'm never going to get away from it, and I can't trust anyone, and I don't know what's really going on, you know, and so it's like, it's going to be a little bit weird on that level, and so just, this is a really good time to practice, and, and it's a challenge for Scorpios also, because they want this connection, they want this passion, and it's like, so to practice boundaries, um, and, uh, don't mistake those old patterns uh, for new excitement kind of thing, right? Because it's like that's when the dark comes and kind of scares you out of your boots, you know? And um, and it's definitely looking, again, like this a spooky Halloween energy because of all of this. So let's just talk through a little bit of this timeline of what's happened. We talked about how Venus went into the shadow September 3rd. Now, on um, September 11th, interesting date uh, was the first Venus opposite Uranus. Now it's really important that in that Mars retrograde that's about in the that was in Aquarius going back into Capricorn. How do we move forward in this new age? We need a new game. We need some new ways of taking action steps. And Mars was in square to Uranus three times. They're not that far away from each other in that square now. So it's almost like it's just coming off and overlapping. Well. So they were. So Mars was in square with Uranus in, in the middle of September, while Venus was opposite Uranus, and Venus and Mars were in square together. And we'll talk more about that because that's a really important energy that's happened throughout 2018 of Venus and Mars. And it's like, so we the Mars retrograde is not going to make sense until we get through the Venus retrograde. So know that a lot of what you were dealing with, frustration about not moving forward, feeling suspended in time, feeling ineffectual, feeling like all your work has been for nothing, that energy has to do with these deeper issues around your self-worth and your inner resources and your valuing of your resources and yourself. And, and a lot of these indigo souls have been going through this so much where You've allowed, we've all allowed this outer world to dictate whether or not our inner resources are valuable. And it's like we've been ta targeted through lifetimes and told so many lies like, you know, we don't want your kind here. We don't want this healing light on the planet. This is, you know, a threat. And it's like, well, what is it a threat to? It's a threat to the old guard, to the old paradigm, to the, this fabricated, uh, lower vibrational reality that has been fed to us through programming again and again and again. And it's like, so this world as it stands is not going to validate that inner light, that North Node in Leo, that part of you that wants to shine and bring forward what you really came here to do. You've worked for many, many lifetimes and evolutions to have a very specific set of skills and gifts and to be here on the planet right here, right now, and then to just have this ongoing rejection. This is a core level programming too. It's a, we don't want your light here. We don't want your kind. And it's like, yes, you do. The world needs this really bad right now. And so it's like, if you're going to let this manifested reality, that's a lower vibrational energy from where you came from, tell you whether or not you're worthy and whether or not you're welcome here, then you're never going to succeed. And this is what this uh, Venus retrograde is saying, go down into the depth and face those feelings, and find that grief, and find that pain, that Saturn square Chiron, these deep old wounds um, that are hidden in the deep in the subconscious from these past lives that are keeping you from feeling like, it's like, well, I'll just kind of wait along, and when somebody comes along and say they really want what I have to offer, then maybe I will consider, and it's like, no, you are going to that's this energy of these unexpressed gifts are going to eat away at you and make you depressed and sick. And so um, this Venus retrograde, it might not be very comfortable at times, but it is incredibly essential for us to move forward and land these new timelines, claim the life we're here to live, and claim back passion and meaning in this existence. So, um, so we talked about, so it's October 5th that Venus takes turns retrograde, and that's at 10 degrees Scorpio. Now, it's interesting that Mars took its retrograde at 9 degrees Aquarius. So Venus and Aquari um, Aquarius and Scorpio are both fixed signs, and so uh, they are in square to each other. That's what we talked about, this very potent Venus-Mars square that happens 
Um, it's happened actually three times. It will happen third time this year in the middle of October. And thrown in there, there was a Venus-Mars opposition uh, during those um, during the eclipse season. And so um, it's this is a dance that's happening between Mars and Venus. And it's, and it's like, so Mars is like, come on, let's do it. Let's make some stuff happen. And Venus is like, it's almost like there's, a, there's like this split uh, in the psyche of the human consciousness. And it feels like, you know, there's di- parts of you that want different things. And it's kind of time to reconcile all that. That's just this feeling of this Mars retrograde and Venus retrograde right on the heels of it. And so Mars took its did its retrograde in the first nine degrees of that of Aquarius, and um, then of course went back into Capricorn. And Venus is doing the first ten degrees. So the first ten nine ten degrees of fixed signs in your chart are really getting worked (laughs) this year of 2018 and it's kind of interesting because our astrology over the last decade has had a lot of cardinal squares and crosses and then we had in the last couple years a lot of mutable energy so cardinal signs are the signs that are starters initiators new energy and the beginning of the season mutable is like when you're getting to the change it's about being flexible it's about kind of working in the middle ground and figuring out what needs to adjust and then the fixed signs are the completers they're the finishers and um, so it's really interesting that we're having all of this fixed energy going on right now and so this this Venus retrograde is, you know, it's just kind of like, it's like the Mars and Venus retrograde are not going to make sense unless you put them together. And so that's kind of why we're like, not out of this energy. Although, on the 9th, so we have on this, so the 5th is when Venus goes retrograde of October. The 6th of October, Jupiter comes out of shadow. I think that's going to help us a little bit. Um, And then Mars comes out of shadow on the 9th of October. So that's going to help us a little bit, kind of, um, feel like some coming out of shadow in other areas of our life and and kind of balance this deep dive that we have to take uh, into the uh, mysterious underworld with um, with Venus and Scorpio. So that is going to happen. Now, Venus is squared. This is really interesting. Venus squared uh, Mars uh, three times. This will be the third time will happen in the middle of October or 11th and 12th of October. And that's in these fixed signs, a fixed square. Last time they made a square in September, seventh, around the 7th or 8th of September, that was in cardinal signs. Okay, And then there was a square back in February between mutable signs. So it's like Venus and Mars, this is really, really important because the Mars retrograde is important, but we don't get it yet because Venus has to go retrograde. And then it's almost like that Mercury retrograde at the end of the year uh, happening on the heels of this Venus retrograde is like going to complete it all and help it all make sense for us and very potent because it's in Sagittarius just after Jupiter uh, leaves Scorpio and moves into its home sign of Sagittarius, which is so excited for. It's about just feeling some expansion, feeling like growing beyond the bounds of this existence and allowing to see that bigger picture, shoot those arrows ahead with those powerful intentions of what you really want. So uh, Jupiter will be out of shadow on the 6th. It's going to remain through the end of October and into November in Scorpio, but then we'll move into Sagittarius. So those things are going to help a little bit kind of deal with this uh, this energy of this Venus retrograde. So we've got that dance of Venus square Mars and saying like your inner values, your, your worth, your, you know, what you really care about is at odds with this ability to move forward, right? That's why it's like we can't really move. You know, the the Mars retrograde, it's like, okay, cool, it's direct, but I'm not feeling it, right? And that's because we don't have all the pieces. We got to get this other piece, this part of ourselves that doesn't know what it really wants and whether it deserves it and whether it should just kind of, um, you know, just kind of not deal with anything at all (laughs) the venus going back into libra and just kind of kind of float through and get by and then when it goes back into scorpio so it goes back into scorpio um 
on uh, December 3rd. So, and then it comes, um, this, the whole retrograde is about six or seven weeks. And so it's, it's a little faster than the Mars retrograde. So don't worry too much. We're kind of going to go boom, boom, boom through this. It's not going to feel so long and drawn out. Um, but it won't be really until the mid-December when Venus comes out of that shadow that we're really going to understand what this has all been about. And, of course, that's where we get this completion of the year. Um, so Venus and Mercury come together. And that happens at 8 degrees Scorpio, and that's mid-October. So we have that very potent final square of Venus and Mars, kind of like, okay, what needs to be adjusted in our self-worth, in our inner being, in our shadow, into this, path, into this deep meaning place of our life in order to be able to move forward. And so that is happening mid-October 11th or 12th, and then... Uh, just after that, on the 16th, 17th, is when Venus is going to come up with Mercury. Now, Venus is retrograde, Mercury is direct, but they're really talking to each other here. Mercury is our day-to-day uh, communication energy of our mental conception, like how we view reality, and Venus is going to have some messages. <laughs> um, you know, So I think we're going to have some information kind of making more sense um of this like what this venus retrograde might be about for us mid-october and we're going to still be in the thick of it but we are going to kind of get a clue um about what this might all mean for us individually now venus and the sun come together at the end of october and so this is really powerful too because venus and the sun when venus and the sun come together now that's when venus will be that marks the place where Venus is now still an evening star. And when Venus takes a retrograde, it will go be a morning star for a while. And so that marks that point is when Venus goes over the sun. And so that happens at the end of October, right, you know, leading up to Halloween and kind of giving us an identity check. Okay, because Venus retrograde in Scorpio conjunct the sun. And the sun is kind of like, who do you think you are? Who are you? Who are you? What role are you playing in this life right now? And that's kind of up for major review because if there's all this deep inner desires and hidden secrets and suppressed emotions that have not, and deep wounds that have not been resolved out of the subconscious, um, then, you know, it could be a complete identity a complete new identity landing for us in a way. And that's kind of cool because we talked a lot in the Mars retrograde about um, an ego death, right? So the false parts of ourselves dying, you know, the parts of ourselves that aren't really true anymore. It's like we're saying, well, I'm this, I'm this. And it's like, you know, we're this evolutionary change is happening. It's happening so fast that it feels slow, but we're ha- being asked to remake ourselves, to basically die and be reborn in the same lifetime. So there's a whole new identity. And a lot of this for star seeds and for indigo souls is like this part of yourself that wasn't welcome on the planet that you kind of cast aside. And now it's time to land that home, a soul retrieval and integrate parts of yourself that have been left in other dimensional frequencies and really come home to your being. So uh, because Scorpio is death, rebirth and transformation. So it's a transformation of our identity, who we think we are. That's right then at that end of October. And then boom, right after that, Venus comes into its second opposition with Uranus. Now, isn't it interesting that these planets, both in retrograde, that's why we can't separate them out, because Mars was a square to Uranus during its retrograde, and Venus is opposing Uranus. In these fixed signs, this is like, we got to get somewhere. The fixed signs want to get somewhere. Like, you know, let's resolve some stuff. Like, we've been way too in the confusion of things and not... You know, this is a lot of what's going on in the world. This, this Venus Scorpio might demand some truth about what's really going on because you can tell we're only being shown a small fraction of the story on all levels, you know, of like the truth of our existence, how long we've been on the planet, whether there's other life out there, um, our financial systems, political systems. Like we've been duped on multiple levels and Venus kind of, you know, in Scorpio is kind of saying, you know, this doesn't feel good. I can't go on without knowing more truth and then our own personal disclosure facing our own truths inside as well. 
So that's a lot about what this Venus opposite Uranus is about, because Uranus is this higher vibrational energy. It's technology. It's also the Aquarian age. It's about uh, it, tapping into a higher knowledge and also ancient wisdom. And so when planets are opposite each other, a lot of times they extract the qualities out of each other. And so Venus is there um, in Scorpio, but retrograde. And then going back in, so there, I'm not, I think it happens right there about zero degrees where Uranus is retrograde too, going back into uh, Aries and Venus is going back into Libra. Or I mean, yeah, so they're making that, so they're having that opposition there and very potent because it's like, especially right after that sun, the sun involved, it's like this identity crisis and who do you think you are? And maybe you haven't gotten all the information that's trying to come through about who you really are and your ancient origins and the truth of the higher truth of the cosmos, um, the vi new vibrational energy trying to come in. And, you know, this has been, we've been programmed deeply in our subconscious to think that these higher energies and ascension energies are catastrophic. They're going to hurt us and hurt other people. This is a big, big lie we've been told, you know, and it's like, what if it's actually lighter and freer and more beautiful and more wonderful and kind of this is this energy trying to come in of Venus um, enjoying that this is a beautiful thing. Venus really wants to appreciate the uh, beauty. And I think that this we have a potential just like what happened when um, after the Pluto Uranus conjunction in the 60s, there was a revival, and of course, it was very much squashed by the powers that be. But there was an artistic and music, uh, in music uh, revival of the arts, like a renaissance. And that's what's about ready to happen here, too. Venus and Scorpio is like going to be awakening some uh, deep impulses, artistic impulses. And you know, it's interesting because. Um, uh, physical beauty kind of gets cast aside when you're in survival mode, right? And Venus is like, no, you know, I don't care how poor I am. I'm going to make a little bit of beauty around here, that kind of energy. But it's like we've really been kept in this survival mode that, like, that's what that Mars retrograde was about, too, is, like, clearing away this deep stuff that is in, in the way of connecting to planet Earth and feeling safe here, the root chakra, a core level of security. And Venus says, let's, you know, this, we got to make life worth living. Like, it needs to be beautiful. It needs to be meaningful. And um, a beautiful renaissance coming um, as a, a repercussion of a reaction of that Pluto-Uranus square we've had over this last eight years that it just held off last year. Um, and so the effect of those comes a few years after the planets come together into those angles. And I think that there's this beautiful opportunity for this, you know, this pendulum swinging into a desire for more meaning and also a desire for more beauty, more true expression, more um, deep, passionate expression in this world with, of course, getting the benefits of that North Node in Leo over this last uh, little over a year. So... Uh, that is a beautiful thing as we like claim a sense of meaning in our life, claim a sense of passion, claim a sense of expression, and that these bright souls on the planet are uh, supported and welcomed into bringing forward these beautiful gifts to make our world more beautiful, make people feel better and more, more harmonious, and um, kind of you know go around this structural low vibrational paradigm and reach up to those higher vibrations. That's what Venus, Venus wants to bring in cosmic beauty in this opposition with Uranus. So it'll be interesting to see, especially with the sun involved, because that has to do with, like I said, our identity. And it's like, okay, well, who are you really? Are you ready to land who you really are? All the pieces of yourself that you've cast aside from traumas and trauma programming in past lives and in this life. And so it's time to claim that real purpose and meaning in life. And that's something that we could all use uh, to see, kind of give us some grounding and some balance as we move through these tumultuous times. So let's hope for that. And um, so then at the end of October, that's when that Venus ret opposite Uranus, now the third one, that's when you get... Um, the third one 
the third hit of the Venus opposite Uranus is when you get the magic, and that happens just after. So this is like um, in December, Venus will come into that third opposition with Uranus, and that's when you get the magic, you get the piece of it, you get the understanding of it, and then that's going to help us go back, understand more about what that Mars retrograde was all about for us. And so then in no, on November 1st is when um, Venus will go back into Libra, and um, it'll be there for the whole month of December until December. I mean, the, the whole month of November. And so it's kind of like we have an intense October leading up to that Halloween and that sun and Mercury conjunction and what in the heck's going on here and beauty. We want real life. We want passion. We want meaning. And what really do we really care about? What do we have to face and let go of to live the life we really want? And then it's going to go retrograde back into Libra. So it's kind of like, Okay, so how do I balance all this? Libra wants to balance things. It wants to harmonize things. And so it's going to be a little lighter. We're going to go out of the intensity into kind of, you know, more figuring out how, like, ooh, where do we go from here? And now I kind of cracked open the shadow of this deep, dark secrets in my psyche and um, kind of sort through that. And then, of course, it goes direct on the 16th, but we'll still be in Libra for the rest of the month. So November 16th is when... Venus will go direct, and the same day, Mercury takes a retrograde. And, of course, Mercury is going to keep us kind of thinking and figuring and trying to understand. And, of course, we won't really get that. The Mercury uh, retrograde happens November 16th until December 6th. So during that time, we'll have that third Venus opposite, Uranus, and we will be moving into new territory as uh, Jupiter gets ready to move into Sagittarius and Mercury take a retrograde in Sagittarius so they're going to hang out together and so then we're but it won't be until Venus gets out of shadow around the middle of December December 17th 18th and uh, Mercury comes out of shadow on Christmas Day so that kind of leads us right up to the end of the year so we've got a few months of um, journeying into some interesting places, but hopefully where we come out with a lot more meaning, a lot more purpose, a lot more clarity. And so just kind of sit tight and know that this process is a culmination. If you want the gifts of 2018 and the activations that have happened, just pay close attention to this Venus retrograde in aligning your life to the true gifts of who you are and how to bring those forward into the world in a deep, meaningful, satisfying way. And that's what's coming for you. But it's going to take sitting with it, paying attention, and being present with your emotions, letting these emotions come up and release as they need to so that you can, because it's about releasing these suppressed emotions from the past because Scorpio cannot it says, no, you can't hold on to that stuff. So it's got to go. Now, a really sweet energy. We talked about how Venus and uh, Mars are in all of these squares. They had three squares this year. The last one will be in that October 11th and 12th in the fixed signs. And, um, and an opposition in the fixed signs happened in June. And then in January, so when we're coming out of all this, right, we got... Venus out of shadow in mid-December. We got Mercury out of shadow on Christmas Day. And then in January 17th, Venus and Mars come together for a fire trine. Really sweet. You know, Venus will move into Sagittarius, join Jupiter and the Sun in Sagittarius, and then on January make a trine with Mars in its home sign of Aries. So it's really sweet because, you know, that first month of the new year, that's before Chinese New Year. So it's this in-between kind of place where we're kind of like, okay, the old year's gone, but we're, we're still in that kind of transition time. And so in that time, we're going to get the sweet, you know, these planets are out of retrograde. The 2018 energy is closing down, finishing out, and then Venus and come together, Mars come together in a trine. It's kind of like, okay, fire trine. This is about creativity. It's about passion. It's about um, taking action and about 
in, with Mars at home in Aries, it's about being who you really are and having the strength to do that. And Venus is saying, hey, yeah, let's go on a journey. Let's go on a journey to be who you really are. Let's, let's claim this life. Let's claim this passion. Venus isn't so scared anymore about those deep inner mysteries that have been holding her back for, from living that life she's really wanted to live. So that's really sweet energy. And then Venus comes together with its conjunction with Jupiter on January 23rd. And so that will be getting us, uh, moving us into, towards that Chinese New Year, into the true energies of 2019. And I'll be talking a lot more about that as we get through the rest of this season. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great Venus retrograde. And I will be back with updates as we go through these important times together and sort through all of this, figure out our new identity, our true identity of who we are that uh, has this, uh, these inner gifts that have yet to be expressed and the shadow work that's keeping them hidden inside and claiming this back so are being coming into a rebirth and a transformation um, through love with love about how we love and what we love and that's the venus energy so uh really great new messages coming in about all this with those three oppositions with uranus bringing in that higher frequency vibration um, kind of rattling Venus's cage, saying it's okay, go into the shadow because it'll be worth it as we get this information and this reset and this rebirth into who you really are and so that you can move into actually living instead of just kind of going through the motions. So I hope you have a great Venus retrograde and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, I'm Adrian Elise. Namaste.